Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. While Merfolk may not be very competitive in Standard, at least it picked up a very important new tool in Explorer thanks to Deep Root Pilgrimage. This two-man enchantment says whenever one or more non-token Merfolk we control become tapped, create a 1-1 one -one blue Merfolk creature token with Hexproof. So there's a lot of ways we can build around Pilgrimage, but one important distinction from this build compared to maybe other blue-green Merfolk builds is that we're not playing with Collected Company, and instead we've got more room for some non-creature spells, such as of course our Deep Root Pilgrimage, and then to synergize with Pilgrimage we've got four copies of Spring Leaf Drum, a one-mana artifact that can tap an untapped creature we control to add one mana of any color. So now if we have a non-token Merfolk, a Spring Leaf Drum and a Pilgrimage, we can tap that Merfolk to generate a 1-1 Merfolk token in addition to making one mana, so that can also lead to some very explosive starts where we quickly build up an army of Merfolk. Then of course we could still be attacking with some of our Merfolk folk, especially our evasive ones, such as our miscloaked herald, which cannot be blocked, and that by attacking also becomes stamped and will make another 1-1 one -one token with pilgrimage. And then another cherry on top here is Kumena, Tyrant of Raska, which really gets to shine alongside the pilgrimage, as we've got various tap abilities, including one where we simply tap one other untapped merfolk we control to make Kumena unblockable until end of turn. So if we have a bunch of untapped merfolk, we can repeatedly use the first ability to make Kumena unblockable just to spawn as many 1-1 one -one tokens with the pilgrimage as possible. Now of course pilgrimage doesn't trigger off merfolk tokens being tapped, otherwise we could just go infinite with Kumena, but it's still very powerful. Then we can also tap three untapped merfolk we control to draw a card, so having a bunch of 1-1s one can still be useful in drawing extra cards if they can't attack. And finally we can tap five untapped merfolk to put a plus one plus one counter on each merfolk we control, so that's when we really want to end the game, we can start pumping the team very quickly. And then we've got the Deep Root Elite as well, which is a bit better in this deck compared to the traditional Lords giving our team plus one plus one, because whenever another Merfolk enters, we get to put a plus one plus one counter on target Merfolk we control, so we can now load multiple plus one counters onto some of our unblockable creatures like Miscloaked Herald and Kumena itself, and that's going to provide a lot more value than a Lord that temporarily pumps the team, but might get removed, and then the plus one plus one bonus goes away as well, at least those plus one counters will last a bit longer. And then we do still have a traditional lord here with a hex catcher, but this one can also help counter non-creature spells by sacrificing a merfolk. And of course, once again, if we make a bunch of 1-1 tokens, we can easily counter all the opponent's non-creature spells with a hex catcher. And then we've got more merfolk at 1 mana with a scout, which lets us explore when it enters, so it can potentially turn into a 2-2 or draw land. And then having a lot of 1-drops is also important if we're playing Springleaf Drum, since that allows us to play, let's say, a 1-mana Merfolk turn 1, and then turn 2, play the drum, and then immediately tap a creature for mana, so we can still play a 2-drop or multiple 1-drops, so that can get us on the board quickly, which will be important in a format as fast as Explorer. And then our other 1-drops also include Jade Bear, which can put a plus 1 counter on another Merfolk we control, so it's not ideal to play this on turn 1, but still very nice to play it on turn 2 once we get our Springleaf leaf a drum going and then the benthic biomancer also has great synergy with jade bear putting a plus one counter on it then we've got our deep root elite and finally kumena can also provide more plus one counters since whenever a plus one counter is placed on it we get to draw a card and then discard a card so that's one way of discarding excess lands in the late game that we no longer need and we can also adapt it for one on a blue if it didn't have any counters on it we get to put an initial counter on it instead and then rounding out the two drops, we've got Silver Gill Adept, which we want to play early while we still have Merfolk in hand, so it can draw a card when it enters for just two mana. And then Merfolk Trickster gives us some more interaction that can maybe disrupt a Grease Fang from bringing back Parhelion for a turn, just get rid of a large blocker so we can get in for lethal, just gives us that added interaction that our deck might be missing otherwise, and gives us another flash threat to play alongside Hexcatcher, so the opponent doesn't necessarily know what's incoming. And then a mana base also picked up some important additions, with Cavern of Souls naming Merfolk to help make our Merfolk uncounterable, and also just good mana fixing. And then Mutavolt also remains very important in any type of deck like this, where we can turn it into a 2-2 Merfolk, but thanks to all the other bonuses from Hexcatcher, we can easily make it even larger. And then it also can provide an extra untapped Merfolk to activate Kumena, so the extra creature lands quite important. And it also helps us cast a Spring Leaf Drum early, so the Colorless mana is not a huge drawback here, as it might be in other builds. And then we've got a bunch more blue-green dual lands to round out the mana base with Breeding Pool Sanctum Pathway, 
one Bosage who has a bit of interaction, and then one Island in case we need to search it up, since uh, there might be some Field of Ruins out there. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with a Promising Hand. We've got our Pilgrimage and even a Springleaf Drum. So we should be able to make quite a few tokens early on. For now, let's go with Miscloaked. That way I can also just play Pilgrimage Attack to enable it. Or we can go Springleaf into Pilgrimage and then turn after. It's going to be easy to make more tokens. And then the Deep Root Elite plus Pilgrimage is also a pretty nice engine. Turn 1 Warden, so likely a red-white tokens deck. Okay, let's see if we can out tokens the tokens deck. For now, I think I like Pilgrimage Attack. And make our first Hexproof token. And then next turn we're gonna wanna a double spell if possible. The Raven Inspector, do they have the Demolition to make three goblins? Looks like it. Alright, so points off to a great start. They can likely Convoke something here too. So this is gonna hurt. Nope, we're not just using the Warden. So thankfully no Convoke creature. Does make it more likely for them to have a uh, Recruiter in hand to pump the team next turn. But we found a land, so that's good. So... Miscloaked Heralds can either attack or tap with a Springleaf Drum. If we, let's see, go Bearer, Springleaf, then I can still play a 2-drop. Could play Hexcatcher at instant speed, perhaps, although if they pump the team, it's not like I'll have a good block if they get one extra power. So maybe save that for next turn, and then for now, get the most out of the Deep Root Elite. Play a land, play a spring leaf drum, and play a jade bear. And then for now, maybe just pump up the miscloaked herald a bunch. Could have also considered making a 3 3 on defense. Just to line up a bit better against a uh, potential recruiter, but I think we'll be okay. And then next turn with Axe Catcher, we can represent a lot of damage. Could have also made a 5 5 Herald. It's gonna be an Epic here. They did not convoke last turn, but maybe they top decked something. Or they're setting up for an even more devastating recruiter coming up here, which also makes sense. At least the 2-2 can discourage the 1-1s from attacking. And then Hexcatcher could be a nice way to ambush the opponent's creatures. With Springleaf Drum, we can tap one of our non-tokens at instant speed as well to uh, get an extra token and plus one counter. So yeah, interesting battle so far. Opponent deciding if they want to activate Warden of the Inner Sky, perhaps. Deciding what to tap, if anything. All right. And, oh, wow, Kumena was an awesome top deck. So I can now play that, and then... There's a lot of options. I can essentially tap each individual non-token to generate another 1-1. One -one. We might almost have enough for lethal here. Use Kumena just to make it unblockable, tapping Deep Root. That's a plus one counter up to six. Jade Bear up to seven. And then we could still tap five untapped Merfolk uh, to get a plus one counter on the entire team. So yeah, we almost have enough to take them out with just a Miscloaked Herald, but we'll definitely get there over the course of two turns. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a Keepable Hand. Got our Pilgrimage. Turn one Merfolk. Hopefully it can keep attacking. And a Silver Gill isn't bad. But maybe we're looking for like a Springleaf Drum or something that can keep tapping our creatures to go off with a Pilgrimage. Black White, not sure what this represents. Could be Grease Fang, I guess. I think I would rather dig towards something else. Like a Merfolk Trickster could be good if we're points on Grease Fang. 
as we can uh, remove the ability, prevent them from reanimating Parhelion for a turn. All right, Thought Seize is next, could take the Pilgrimage, in which case we can still double one drop and keep up the pressure. And there's Spring Leaf Drum, but I no longer really need it. All right, so didn't quite get to live the dream of our turn to enchantment. Now let's see what our opponent's up to. Hallow Blade can be a discard outlet in the Grease Fang deck. So yeah, attacking with the scouts now not particularly exciting, unless we make it a four-four, which I guess is an option. And then attack all out, our opponent likely blocks our 2-2 scouts. And then could see discard Parhelion. Next turn, Grease Fang to bring it back. Yep. Alright, just gotta hope they don't find a land for it. Since they did miss their land drop last turn. There's another Deep Root Waters, although it might be too late now. Might want to keep digging towards our Merfolk Trickster. It's going to be a Wither Bloom Command. Take out Jade Bear and Mill a Grease Fang alongside a Can't Stay Away. And a land to play Grease Fang next turn. All right, it's going to be tough. There we go, Merfolk Trickster, exactly what I wanted. So now we can animate Mutavolt. Attack all out. We're one shy of just presenting lethal right now by tapping the Hallow Blade. But now we've got a way of uh, stopping Grease Fang by removing its ability with a Trickster. So yeah, digging for it paid off. Potent falls to 5 after jumping the 4-4, discarding a Thought Seize. Yeah, as it turns out, Thought Seize could have let them bring back Parhelion here. I guess they might have another one in hand. No, it's going to be a Seder Wayfinder, so maybe they just didn't have a Grease Fang after all. And then next turn with Can't Stay Away, they would be able to access it. I guess they could have a two mana can stay away in hand as well. A Rite of Oblivion instead, removing the scout. So now Trickster tapping Hallow Blade should be game. Can fire up double Mutavolt as well. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a very solid hand. We've got the uh, Spring Leaf Drum to help enable Pilgrimage. Could use a bit more top ends to synergize with Pilgrimage, but uh, eventually the Biomancer can also adapt. So, sequencing. Could also play a one drop and then next turn play Pilgrimage and attack. And there's a Deep Root Elite. Definitely keep that one on top. Opponent Blue Red, so. A Phoenix deck is going to have a lot of removal, but uh, yeah, our Hexproof tokens are going to be pretty annoying for them to deal with. So play the Pilgrimage. The opponent's deck is not going to have a lot of counter spells, but they might have a one of Spell Pierce or Jewelry Disruption, so just good to get this in play. And a Ledger Shredder is next. Okay, our deck will be double spelling a fair bit, so Shredder does get to connive. But let's see here. Can play Spring Leaf Drum and Deep Root Elite, and then still play our Biomancer, which will also benefit from the uh, plus one counters here. So play Spring Leaf. 
they get to connive. But we'll be able to grow the scout quite a bit if we want. Now, the threshold here is we want to get a creature to 6 toughness if possible. Otherwise they can still lightning axe. So it's possible I'm still better off loading up my counters onto the hexproof creature. Even if that means missing out on a scout attack. So yeah, no attacks right now. And next turn I can tap and put a counter on Biomancer potentially if they don't take out the elites. And that's uh, another way of drawing and discarding. Can be helpful in finding another merfolk to enable the adept. Opponent does already have a phoenix in the graveyard. They're digging to maybe put another one in there. We'll see if they have removal for the elite, seems likely. No, it takes out the Biomancer instead. Okay, so Phoenix is back. Take five. But we found another Merfolk. So this is going to be pretty sweet. Play Adept, revealing Mistcloaked. Keep loading up our counters here. Find another Springleaf Drum. Yeah, sure, why not? They get to connive. Make another token. Could see the benefit of diversifying our threats now a little bit. Just so they can't easily chum block with a phoenix and prevent a lot of damage. And attack all out. And make another token. Opponent's at six. Alright, just need to survive an attack from a bunch of flying creatures. There is another phoenix in the graveyard. So nine, ten. If they grow Ledger Shredder and bring back one phoenix. If they mill a third one, we could die. Alright, there's a third phoenix. So now we're probably dead. Well, our deck got to go off quite nicely here. But uh, opponent got somewhat fortunate to mill three finishes in the top however many cards. This looks like a treasure cruise is incoming. Yep. And yeah, if they leave double phoenix, that's going to be just enough here. Alright, never mind. I guess your opponents didn't put an extra plus one counter on Shredder, so they were still one short. I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with uh, what looks like a keepable hand. No deep root waters, but still a good curve. And then Kumina as a curve topper. So, yeah, probably go for Scout. That our opponent's going to be interested in taking it out. And a Deep Root Elite isn't bad. Yeah, I guess I should keep it and the next turn go Spring Leaf plus Adept. And then try and hit our land drop afterwards. So our opponent Red Black Sacrifice, turn to Priest. So we just want to put a bunch of small creatures into play and hope to avoid a Mayhem Devil pretty much. Play Silver Gill. If we go with another Drum or Herald, that doesn't really help us, so yeah. And then a uh, Merfolk Trickster could maybe deactivate the Priest for a turn. If this is a Claim the Firstborn, they can essentially wipe our board, which would be a bit of a setback. Now a Shambling Gas can take out Adept, and then Scout dies to the Priest's ability. So yeah, finding our Deep Root Waters to make some Hexproof creatures would go a long way. And we've got Double Spring Leaf Drum to enable it. Our opponent's not activating the Priest yet, and now Merfolk Trickster is an option. So let's see, play Spring Leaf Drum... 
play another Herald, and then I can still trickster at instant speed. Sure. Could also save the trickster to shut down a Mayhem Devil, but not before our opponent can get a bunch of triggers off of it. Opponent going for a priest activation end of turn. So we could hex catcher now to try and save adapt. Possible they have a fatal push in hand. And I guess uh, it's worth finding out. And then sacrifice a creature, Silver Gill can go. And they're going to use their mana to maybe Fatal Push the Hexcatcher. Infernal Grasp. No point in countering since we want them to lose the life. And attack for two. Okay, well, this was a bit of a meat grinder. Or fish grinder. But uh, at least we didn't have to face a Mayhem Devil just yet. And we can hope they can't enable Priest again. Okay, so Kumena is now an option. Although I feel more comfortable playing Kumena once we can shut down the Priest with Trickster. So I think this is Elite. And then I can still attack with Scout and play Trickster at instant speed to try and maybe shut down the Priest. Opponent takes it. Maybe planning to activate a castle, so their hand must not be great. Don't have to cast a trickster just yet. Can wait and see what they do. Maybe they go for a claim the firstborn and then we deactivate it. Although we'll have to make sure to float our mana with Springleaf Drum. So five mana. And a Meat Hook Massacre for one. Yeah, that's worth responding to. With the plus one counter, we can save the Deep Root Elite itself. Still would have been a decent play in the face of another Hexcatcher, but a Trickster lined up a bit better, and another Priest. Okay, so now I can play Kumena, and I think we just want to beat down as much as possible, as opposed to trying to draw, which is also possible here. hit for eight. And then we've got some more unblockable threats potentially. One falls to two. Okay, pass it back. And let's see what they've got. We're out of cards. Probably see a claim the firstborn here. I have to imagine. Yep, stealing our trickster. Attack with it, take the hit. And a Ghost Rider can maybe sacrifice a Trickster or they can activate Priest. But uh, yeah, if they don't find an answer to Kumena and Mist Cloaked, those can still become unblockable. So I think Scout now is our weakest threat. Since the Elite can pile more counters onto our unblockables. And a Witch's Oven, alright, so that's bad news. With the Massacre and the Cat in the Graveyard, although they still need to get their initial food token. At least we have unblockable creatures at the ready, so that can help get past the Familiar, which would otherwise chump block forever. There's a few top decks that might be able to win us the game. Deep Root Waters would be pretty high upon our list here. Opponent's shocking down to one. Okay, so they can activate Priest again. 
and then I guess they're planning to escape Voice Strider. So we have to sack another creature. Opponent will get Voice Strider back, and then Voice Strider can sacrifice. It's got to be Kumena plus Elite. Just some more impactful cards. And we're down to six in the meantime from all these massacre triggers and priest triggers. Okay. So I believe we just need to draw any merfolk now to win the game, as we'll be able to put another counter on Kumena, make it unblockable, and attack for three. And yeah, the scout should be good enough here. Play it, trigger Deep Root Elite, counter on Kumena, and then uh, make Kumena unblockable to attack for three. Our opponents can gain one life by bringing back Cauldron Familiar. But uh, yeah, the Meat Hook Massacre is not going to gain them any life unless our creatures die, which is not going to happen. And uh, yeah, other than Voice Strider sacking to Scry, they can't do much else. So definitely seeing the value of having some unblockable merfolk in this matchup, where uh, the opponent often counts on chum blocking to survive. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. And we get to rank up here as well, I believe. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with uh, Fine Hand. We've got a one mana Merfolk into Pilgrimage. Can start with maybe a Scout. Finding a Biomancer. Don't think we need another one. Looking for Kumena, perhaps. Blue black with a sleight of hand, so not entirely sure what that represents. But uh, I'm liking Pilgrimage here while the coast is clear. And then Hexcatcher should be pretty effective against a spell heavy deck. Could be a Grixis Phoenix deck, I suppose. Playing black for Shieldred sometimes. And a Ledger Shredder's next. So if we play a Deep Root Elite, then we can attack, get a token and a plus one counter as well, which can grow either a Scout or the Hexproof token, so we don't play into removal. And then I'll probably end up double spelling and enable connive, but that seems fine. Could also try and set up an ambush with a hex catcher. Don't think our opponent's gonna buy it. So yeah, maybe I do just uh, attack and then load a plus one counter onto the hexproof token. We'll see if they discard a non land card. Eh, just a land. So now I can attack with both, otherwise I may not have been able to. So they can soak up two damage, take three. And yeah, they already have a lot of things they need to deal with. And a hex catcher still coming up. Fatal push the elites. If they can deal with all my non-tokens, they can potentially shut down the Pilgrimage. So maybe that's their plan. Better triumph the Biomancer, but yeah, we still have our Scout. Which will get buffed by the Hexcatcher, so it can still attack into a 2-4 Shredder. Put on discarding another Triumph. Ooh, and a Merfolk Trickster. Yeah, we can just tap down the Shredder, attack all out. And then remove the ability to connive. And then we're probably going to be far enough ahead. Opponent falls to four, and Hexcatcher can help us counter any non creature spells. And that should be game here. 
their shieldreds. That's not going to be good enough. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand is a little bit unexciting. A lot of one drops and Kumena could be nice. No spring leaf drum for that mana boost. No pilgrimage. No two mana lords either. So yeah, this one could go either way. If Kumena survives, then we can start growing the team. Scouts makes it more likely that we find our third land. So I'll try it. Put into red whites. And it looks like tokens with Ornithopter. And a turn one demolition already. Okay. Hexcatcher's a potentially exciting draw. For now, let's go with the Scout, which could turn into a 2-2, which would be a decent blocker. Don't need another Scout, however. Epicure into maybe a Convoke. Allegiance Landing, and then Convoke as one of their last two cards would be very strong. Yeah, Loxodon putting a plus one counter on the team. That's gonna hurt next turn. I can make a 3-3 three, three if I flash in Hexcatcher. And then I'm still taking a, a lot of damage, 12 to be precise. I don't know if I can really survive this. Might already be too little too late. I guess we can Jade Bear make a 3-3 three, three scout. And then uh, play a Herald as well. A land into a Recruiter is definitely game over. Just an all-out attack. Landing transforms. And then can I afford to double block? Having a critical mass of Merfolk is important with Elite and Hexcatcher. But yeah, we are taking 12 damage here. Down to 5. Opponent can probably make some more tokens. And then next turn... I guess we could try and set up better blocks with the Hexcatcher. Yeah, it's uh, unlikely to work out, but let's try it. So opponent can activate Adanto at the very least. Did not find the land. So just got to pass and uh, flash in Hexcatcher. Then we've got two trades, a profitable block, and a chum block. Still take four down to one at least. So yeah, it's not looking good. Opponent goes all out. I guess we could try and trade for Loxodon as well, instead of having to chump. And then, yeah, just trade as much as possible, basically, including the Axe Catcher, take four down to one. But uh, yeah, they can still activate Adanto at the very least. We're dead to another Epic here. Yeah, uh, that'll do it. GG's, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a hand that's missing a one-mana creature pretty much, otherwise it would be quite awesome. Still gonna keep, since we have a drum alongside Pilgrimage, which should be quite fun. And play this on blue, although probably gonna end up taking two either way. Facing blue-red Phoenix. Okay. So... Don't expect too many counter spells. Now we found our Jade Bear, that's nice. So we can play Silver Gill into Jade Bear and then next turn deploy Pilgrimage. Because if I go Jade Bear into Pilgrimage to make use of Spring Leaf, the plus one counter goes to waste. And then getting immediate value of Pilgrimage is also nice both by attacking with a creature as well as maybe tapping a creature down with a spring leaf and now we even have a second one. So yeah, next turn could be pretty awesome. 
opponent taps out for Ledger Shredder. So we have options. Let's say we play Pilgrimage, then play another Springleaf Drum, make a token. I guess we want to start by attacking with the Silver Gill after playing Pilgrimage. And then we're going to want to play another Springleaf. Tapping Jade Bear, make a token. And then we can play Scouts, even if we don't get to make another token, since uh, Deep Root doesn't trigger off tokens tapping, which would be a little bit too easy to set up an infinite combo with Kumena that way. And we still found a land, all right. So next turn... We can Silver Guild draw and still Trickster, tap something down. Opponent in the meantime did discard a Phoenix, which they might be able to get back next turn, it looks like. So yeah, finding a Kumena to pump the team would be great. A Deep Root Elite, also quite strong here. All right, that's already double Phoenix in the graveyard. So this will be coming back. All right, so step one might actually be Trickster now to prevent the connive. Tap down Shredder. And then we still have Miscloaked Herald we can reveal. And tap down the Trickster. Make a token. And find a Scout, which I could now play, although Herald is also fine. I guess if Scout hits a land, I can still do both. So, tap our Summoning Sake creature to get the most out of it. And another Pilgrimage. Maybe not quite what I need anymore, since we're potentially going to lose to a bunch of Flyers. Even if we make more tokens on the ground, we can probably present lethal over the course of two turns regardless. But it is still tempting with double Springleaf Drum. If we can find a Hexcatcher or a Kumena, that's probably better. Opponent falls to eight. Yeah, this might be get back double Phoenix, play defense, and never mind, our opponent's already too far behind. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Missing our Deep Root Waters, but uh, still looks keepable to me. With Springleaf Drum accelerating our mana slightly. So, still interested in playing a one drop, I think. And a Silver Gill looks good, so next turn we can Springleaf plus Silver Gill if we'd like. Facing Mono Black, maybe Devotion. If they take out our scouts, then that line's no longer available. But I still like playing Silver Gill. And then Biomancer probably revealing the least amount of information out of all our creatures. Next turn could go Springleaf plus Kumena. Although Kumena, if we're facing a bunch of removals, is going to be better if we can immediately tap three Merfolk to draw. So instead... We could Springleaf, play Biomancer and Adapt, or Springleaf, play Scout and then maybe Trickster to tap down the Aetherborn. Don't hate that idea. Of course, we might be worried about a discard spell. So keeping an extra Kumena is not a terrible idea. Although their removal is more Virtue of Persistence than uh, for Toughness might be enough to survive it. I think a backup Kumena is still wise. And then, yeah, we'll just pass, planning to tap down the Aetherborn. Fountain to gain two. And 
and a Thoughtseize can have a look, so glad we kept another Kumina on top. Takes Kumina anyways. And another Etherborn. Okay, so if I play Kumina, can immediately tap three Merfolk to draw. And then if we draw, I guess a one mana Merfolk, I could potentially draw a second time. Or we can just empty our hand and add plus one counters to the team, which might be better long term. And then if I, I guess I have to play Cavern of Souls, if I want to uh, have enough untapped Merfolk, but we can actually use the uh, Springleaf Drum to animate Mutavolts, although I guess never mind then, we would still only have four untapped Merfolk. So yeah, I think it's just pass, activate Kumena, we'll get to loot with a Biomancer, just discard whatever we draw. But then at least we'll be left with creatures that are large enough to trade for an Aetherborn. Opponent is attacking. I think I'm happy with one trade. Maybe both. Yeah, I guess Aetherborn is kind of a long-term problem. And discarded a lane, so that's good value. Still have three Merfolk left to maybe draw with Kumena. Or we can start attacking now. And a Meat Hook Massacre for two only deals with the Biomancer, so... I guess it worked out, and now Hexcatcher is very nice too. So Mutavolt can animate, play Hexcatcher, attack all out. Seems reasonable to me. Go for maximum pressure. Not quite a two-turn clock, but we're getting close. Could see a Grey Merchant here at five mana. Field of Ruin, a nice answer to Mutavolts. They're gonna fire it off right away. Do have one basic island, luckily. And there's another Mutavolts. So... Yeah, probably keeping up the pressure here. Could also draw one card with Kumena after animating Mutavolts. We're giving up five damage basically to draw a card. So a close call, but I'll give it a shot. Alright, found a land, not the best, but that's fine. Get in for four. And now an Invoke Despair, which we can just counter by sacking either Hexcatcher or we can sacrifice, I guess, a Mutavolt is also an option. So, use the ability, counter Invoke Despair, sacking Mutavolts. And then now we'll just hit for 9. This is where Collected Company could be nice. Massacre Worm. Yep, can sack the Hex catch in response since there's no non-creature spell being cast. So, yeah. Now our opponent's back to 5. I can make Kumena unblockable to hit for 4 down to 1. Not quite lethal. Or we can play Hex catcher and draw. Getting in for 4 damage is probably still worth it. And then it's not going to be too difficult to cross the finish line. Another Field of Ruin. Luckily, 
we no longer have our Mutavolt, and I thought Seas will see a land as our opponent explodes. Alright, nice. Close one here against the Mono Black Control, but the Merfolk got it done. So yeah, overall, we got to see a couple nice games with our Deep Root Waters, and it definitely put in work, helping us go wide to generate hexproof threats and synergizing very well with both Kumena and our Deep Root Elite. So there's plenty of synergy to go around, proving that Merfolk can be built without Collected Company in Explorer as well, and still be quite successful. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!